Welcome explorers, I am Astro Destroyer. Today we are going to discuss about the decryption coding part by using the Java programming language for Playfair Cypher. So let's start the video. So now this video is about the final part or the decryption part for our Playfair Cypher. So as usual, basically I am going to start from, I am going to start explaining from the public static void main function. Here as you can see inside this function, the control is going to first of all come inside this function. And inside this function, the first thing which I had done is I had declared one string variable called encpt and I had taken the cipher text as input from the user by using the scanner class and then I had declared the string variable called key and I had also taken the same from the user as input and after that I had invoked the decrypt function which is taking the encrypt or encpt string variable as well as key variable. So after here the control is going to pass over to the decrypt function. So here is the decrypt function static void decrypt and taking two arguments encpt and key. Okay. So basically these two things are string and we have to convert them into character array for our convenience. So for that I am going to write so for that I'm going to write these two lines of code. The first line of code is going to convert the string encpt to the character array format called encpt underscore arr and for the key string variable we are going to convert it to the character array format and having the variable called key underscore arr. So these are the two character arrays called encpt underscore arr and key underscore arr. So these are the character array equivalents of encpt string variable and string variable called key. Now after that I had created one one dimensional character array called alpha containing the letters of the English alphabet from A to Z where I, where I is there but J is not there. So basically you all might have seen my previous video so basically I had declared uh, the same thing there also and after that I had declared one two dimensional character array called table having five rows and five columns and I had then declared what integer variable called control ctr equal to minus one I had initialized it at the time of declaration and this for loop where this for loop as you can see here this for loop is basically going to fill the first set of positions present in the table two dimensional character array with the letters of the word which are present inside the key. So suppose if you have monarchy then M O N A R C H and Y are going to get stored inside the table two dimensional character array in the row wise format and after storing and at the time of storing basically I am going to block each of the values which are already taken by putting in their place the character 0. And so, so that again when I am running the for loop, the alphabet or the alpha character array, then whenever I encounter the character 0, then I am not going to consider it. Instead, where I am not encountering the character O, I am basically going to take that characters, take those characters and put it inside the table in the row wise format as I had done before in this for loop. So this for loop is going to do that. And after that, I had invoked or prompted the user to, sorry, after that I had printed the reference table by using this for loop. Okay, so system.out.println, the reference table, and then I had printed the reference table. And after that, basically I had declared one character array called any. Basically, this is the same as the previous one. This is basically the encrypted, sorry, this is basically the intermediate text. So, and after that I had also declared one integer intermediate, sorry, any underscore counter. So basically this is going to keep track of the number of characters which we have inside the intermediate text. So this is basically the counter for that. And after that I had run one for loop, basically this is the for loop which is going to map the values or the row as well as column values for each of the pairs of characters. So suppose you have the encrypted text. So suppose you have uh, 
sorry, suppose you have the intermediate text, sorry, and the intermediate text is always going to have even number of characters, right? So, we, ha we have some pairs of characters. Now, for each of the pairs of characters, we are going to run the for loop. So, suppose if you have 6 characters or 3 pairs, then this for loop is going to run 3 times. Now, for each of the pairs or for each of the iterations, we are basically going to store the row as well as column value or column index for the first character as well as second character of each of the pairs. So, the row value for the first character of each pair is going to get stored inside row 1 and the column value for the first character of each of the pairs is going to get stored inside column 1. And similarly, the row value for the second character of each of the pairs is going to get stored inside row 2 and the column value for the second character of each of the pairs is going to get stored inside column 2. And after doing that, suppose the row 1 as well as the column, suppose the row 1 as well as the row 2 values are same. So, if you encounter any situation where the two characters of belonging to a single pair are belonging to the same row. So, for that you have to increment their column values. Sorry, in this case, in the case of decryption, unlike encryption, we have to decrement the column 1 value as well as column 2 value by 1. And you can also add the wraparound condition by modulus 5, modulus 5 and plus 5 also because 0 minus 1 is going to give us minus 1 and we cannot divide minus 1 by 5 and get one remainder. So, that is the case why I am actually adding 5. So, it will basically give us 4 in that case. 5 minus 1 is 4 and 4 modulus 5 will give us 4. So, basically it is also going to give one wrap around condition. And now, if you encounter the next type or the next rule comes here is that if you have two characters belonging to a pair where the column as well as where the column values are the same. So, if they belong to the same column then we are going to decrement the row 1 as well as row 2 values by 1 and we are also going to apply the wrap around condition. And after that in each of these cases, in this case as well as this case, we are basically going to increment the pointer or counter sorry, the intermediate counter we are going to increment it and before incrementing we are going to store the character which is present in the respective position by mapping the row 1, column 1, row 2, column 2 values with respect to the table value inside the intermediate variable or the any variable. So, if you encounter any of those situations, so if you encounter any of these situations, you are going to do this. For the first one, you are going to do the same and the second one, you are also going to do the same. And after that, if the characters belonging to each of the pairs do not belong to the same row as well as to the same column. Then for that case, you have to do the same thing, pretty much the same thing which we had done in the encryption function also. So, this is what you have to do. Basically, this is the same thing as the encryption one also. And else part does not contain any case because it does not have anything. So, these are the possible three cases which you can encounter while finding the positions or comparing the positions of the characters for each of the pairs which we have inside the intermediate text. And after that, the intermediate text is generated. So, you can print it out and then we are declaring one character array, one D character array called DCPT underscore ARR. And one DCPT ARR counter is also declared where it is initialized to 0. So, this will basically keep track of the number of characters inside the decrypted array or character array. So, after that, I, I am running one for loop where basically for each of the characters present inside the intermediate text is going to run and suppose you encounter any intermediate text. If you encounter any character present in the intermediate text where you are encountering any x, so you have to become very cautious and for all this stuff only, I have written all these if conditions as I have done in the previous video. But Writing this if conditions was relatively easy for me than the previous video because this if conditions I already knew the logic because I had already written the previous video. So, this for loop as a whole is basically going to generate the decrypted text. So, you can think like that you can go through the code I will give the link to the PDF file of this entire code in the description you can check that out if you want to go line by line 
of the entire code and after that we have to after the decrypted text is generated after the end of the for loop this for loop then you have to print the decrypted text so the decrypted text you can print it out system dot out dot print the decrypted text and you have to run one for loop and print each and every character present inside the decrypted array or the dscpt underscore arr character array so that was all from the coding part now let me give you some examples and let me explain you some of the drawbacks which you can face. So let me explain by using the familiar one only, enter ciphertext. So you can enter the ciphertext now. Now let me enter C F S U P M and enter the key monarchy. Let me expand this and as you can see I entered the ciphertext as CF SUPM key as monarchy and the reference table is generated. So as I had basically described in the introductory video for the Playfair cipher the intermediate text is this one H E L X L O and the decrypted text is hello. So basically this was the ciphertext I actually remembered the ciphertext so I had actually typed in here. Now let me give you the drawback for this code which I had actually written it basically doesn't work for all those cipher texts which have J and basically after compiling or in the due process of the program it will not be able to recognize capital J because we don't have any capital J in the cipher text. So basically let me give you an example. So in the next case in the drawback case I'm going to write the cipher text as SB U Z U Z and enter the key as monarchy. So the reference table is generated and the intermediate text as you can see here in the introductory video I had actually generated the intermediate text as J A Z X Z X but here it is coming I A Z X Z X. So this is basically a drawback because in the cipher text we don't have any because in the intermediate text you actually don't have any capital J because I and J are considered to be the same in the table. So in the table as you can see we don't have any J. So it will not be able to recognize any J even if it is there in the actual text or the plain text or the decrypted text. So the decrypted text also is going to present the same thing only with no J. So here in place of J which was actually supposed to be J it will not be able to detect it. So it will actually is bound to it actually is bound to print the decrypted text without J and in place of J wherever you encounter J it is going to print capital I. So this is one drawback and this can actually lead to severe data loss if you had actually used it in the world war or in any other place. So for these characters or for this type of plain text where you have J in the plain text you should not use this type of cipher. So according to me I think that there are many advanced algorithms we can use that but the code which I had written here cannot actually detect this. So this is one drawback for it. Now finally let me give you another example which is bound to work very smoothly. Now for the Astro Destroyer welcome sorry welcome explorers the cipher text I remember it is as so in case of the cipher text I am going to enter this one and then I am going to enter the key as monarchy. So as you can see we have got the reference table intermediate text is this one and the decrypted text is nothing but welcome explorers. So basically this cipher text I was actually remembering and I could recall it so I could write it and after writing the key the reference table is generated and displayed. Also the intermediate text is also displayed and uh, finally the decrypted text or which is nothing but the plain text is also displayed. So finally we had accomplished our mission. So remember the drawback and except the drawback everything works completely fine by this code. So if you want to learn more about this code then you can check the description box. So that's all from this video guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you really enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a like and also subscribe to my channel for further interesting updates. I will come up with some other interesting topics as well as videos. Until then, keep exploring.